We caught cicadas in the rains of Syracuse. You and my daddy, mom, happy, brother, too. Feeling summer in the fall. Knowing autumn when the winter lasts too long. A school bus as a home Driving around the country You listen to Willie and Johnny too Feeling trapped in your own skin Wasting time waiting for life just to begin Tossing stones across the stage Cicadas in the rains of Syracuse. You and my daddy, mom, happy brother, too. Welcome to the 42nd Annual Mayor's Arts Awards, coming to you live from Fiendish Plots in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm your host, D. Wayne Taylor, and that was our local band, The Wildwoods, with their song, Reigns of Syracuse, recorded by our partners in this evening's broadcast, The Basement Creators Network, that was actually recorded at another local studio, Studio PH. So a big thank you to them as well. Mayor Lyrian Gaylor Baird and the Lincoln Arts Council are proud to present the 2020 Mayor's Arts Awards coming to you totally virtually. Now, if you're wondering why Ode to Joy this year, this whole thing was inspired by Ludwig van Beethoven's 250th birthday. So the awards and all of the Lincoln Arts Council's programming for this year will connect to our theme, an ode to joy. Art and music are pure expressions of joy, especially when times are difficult. Art helps and uplifts like nothing else. I mean, seriously, for writers, artists, and all kinds of creatives, this process, making art, is cathartic. And all of us can find joy even in a year like 2020. Look, I get it, you know, pandemic happened, we got civil unrest, the election is coming up, and even murder hornets, which honestly, I never saw any murder hornets. I'm thankful for it, but we were promised murder hornets. How are you supposed to protect your mental health and stay connected to your community in times like these? Protecting mental health, connect to your community. Oh, through the arts, of course. Unfortunately, it's been kind of a difficult year for the arts. Venues have closed. Musicians and performers can't perform in the places that they usually would. It's like, how in the world are we all supposed to get back together? So much of how we process arts as a community means we physically come together, you know? But for so many, that just can't happen yet. And many in the arts community have suffered as a result. So 
Today, let's celebrate and commit ourselves to supporting the arts community in a way that we can until we can all get safely back together, okay? And it's not just because the arts is a beautiful thing and help us find joy. The arts is also a driver of our economy and the road to recovery has to include the arts. Artists are 100% essential. Now, according to the Arts and Economic Prosperity Study conducted by the Americans for the Arts and the Lincoln Arts Council, the economic impact of nonprofit arts and cultural organizations and their audiences in the city of Lincoln, Nebraska in 2015, five years ago, was $99 million. Million. The Arts in Lincoln supports nearly 3,000 jobs, provided Lincolnites with 74 million in household income, and generated nearly 10 million in local and state tax revenue. Look, Lincoln needs the arts. And right now, the arts need Lincoln more than ever. Now, before we introduce you to all of our honorees, we need to take a quick second to say a big thank you to our event sponsors. Without their generous support, the Mayor's Arts Awards would not be possible. So first, I would like to say a big thank you to our presenting sponsors, Emeritus and Avery Woods. A big thank you to our live online art auction sponsor, Dalston Truck Lines, Inc. Yeah, yes, yes, there is a live auction. It's happening right now, and you can bid up until the end of the live stream. Trust me, I'll have more on that in a minute, but I want to say a big thank you to our winner's virtual experience sponsor, the Merrill Lynch Roper Bennett Team. Their support means that our honorees are being treated to a wonderful, extravagant evening just like they would have at Pinnacle Bank Arena. Earlier this evening, all of our honorees, their families, friends, they had dinner from Doorstep Diner delivered to them to enjoy while we live stream our event. And in addition, this is a celebration, so our friends at the other room developed some fantastic signature cocktails for this event and created drinks that'll be delivered to our honorees as well. So they're gonna be able to enjoy the entire thing just as much as you will be at home. And plus, if you're able to get yourself a drink kit, make sure that you, of course, put that drink kit together, share a drink with us. And of course, if you did not, and if you weren't able to, that's okay, grab water. I have my water here, and you can make that work as well. Now, you may have seen some of these signature cocktails, the O to Us and the Joyous Opus, all over our social media channels the past few days. If you didn't get the kit, you could still order from the other room and enjoy it another evening. Just hit them up on their Facebook page to order yours. Now, because the drink themselves are a work of art and we have honorees at home who are itching to finally get their drink, I want to introduce you to my friend Kyler from the other room. He's going to show us how to make the O to Us and the Joyous Opus. Hi, my name is Kyler Ost. I'm a bartender here at uh, the other room. Lincoln, Nebraska, and I'm going to be running through just a couple of our cocktail kits uh, for the mayoral awards. So the first one that we're going to be going with is uh, the Ode to Us, spin off of an old fashioned. So it's going to be a nice rye whiskey base. We made a uh, chamomile and rosemary infused honey, and then we used some of our house made allspice bitters and some of our Angostura bitters as well, just to kind of add some extra flavors to the kit here. I recommend giving just a nice kind of two and a half ounce pour from this particular kit just so you get a nice balance of all the honey, the whiskey, and the bitters at work. We'll give that a nice stir over our ice cube. And then we're going to finish it all up by taking a nice sprig of rosemary, grabbing a lighter, and giving it just a quick little light on the tips and once it starts smoking like that we'll drop it into the drink give it one more stir and then we're good to go hi my name is Kyler Ost I'm one of the bartenders here at the other room uh, and today I'm going to be walking you through our joyous opus cocktail kit so we'll start by grabbing our glass here getting a nice kit start by taking the top off with that the Joyous Opus is a kind of a nice house spin on a kind of fall French 75. So there's going to be a house infused apple cinnamon vodka that we have as the base for that. A nice apple cider syrup also made here in house. And then we'll be finishing it off with some Peychaud's bitters, topping it with some Prosecco. And so I'm starting off by just grabbing a nice little two and a half ounce pour of the cocktail from the kit. 
And then I'll grab just a half ounce of lemon juice. And I'm uh, going to finish the drink off with some of this Prosecco. When you go to pour, start bubbling up pretty fast. But once it gets about an inch from the top, that's where I like to kind of pull it back. So if it would look like it's going to bubble over, there won't be uh, too much spillage. Then we're going to take a cinnamon stick, just plop it down in the middle, and that'll get it all nice and stirred up, and it's good to go. Enjoy. Man, that sounds amazing. Okay, I got to tell you, I got the one that lit on fire, so I, unfortunately they won't let me have it in here. But I do have water. If you made your drink, cheers to you. And don't forget, you can still swing by the other room after our event to pick up your drink kit and have it. So this is our first time doing the Mayor's Arts Awards virtually. It's a lot of firsts for people in 2020. What I'm realizing though is all these screens, you can't see them, but I can see them. The, I can see if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, pop, pop a comment in the chat. We can see, let us know that you're here, say hi. We have our board watching. And of course you can connect with the community that's all around. You can chat with each other and talk about some of the awesome things that you're going to be seeing tonight. My goodness. Oh, of course, this wouldn't be the mayor's arts award without the mayor. So let's start this whole thing off with words from our mayor, Lyrian Gaylor Baird. Good evening. I'm Mayor Lyrian Gaylor Baird. Thank you for joining us for the 42nd annual Mayor's Arts Award celebration. And special thanks to our Arts Council staff, board of directors, and supporters for the dedicated work you do all year long to keep the arts alive in Lincoln. One of my most enjoyable duties each year especially this year, is to select the Mayor's Choice Award winner. Because this event was originally scheduled for the spring, I actually picked the Mayor's Choice Award winner way back in February. I was delighted then, as now, to honor Kathleen Grossman of Down Under Pottery for her incredible contributions to the Empty Bowls fundraisers, which benefit our local food bank. A few years ago, I took home this glazed ceramic piece from one of the food bank's Empty Bowls events, made so successful by Kathleen's generosity and talent. And whenever I see this bowl resting on my kitchen shelf, I see more than a beautiful and functional piece of art. I see a symbol of sustenance, of the effort that our community makes to sustain those who are struggling by providing nourishment, strength, and life. Now, as I reflect upon all that has transpired over the course of this year, I think about sustenance more broadly. As we all seek to summon strength, inspiration, and compassion during a global pandemic, the arts offer a source of sustenance to us all. The arts nourish our souls. The arts give strength to our dreams. And the arts remind us that while suffering remains forever a part of the human condition, so does our will to overcome it. So does our determination to find and create beauty in the truths of our existence. The artists we celebrate tonight demonstrate better than almost anyone that spirit of determination, as do this event's organizers. As we move to virtual formats to keep each other safe during the pandemic, we are fortunate that our arts community continues to create innovative ways to safely entertain and inspire. Live performances, art shows, and events have gone both outdoors and online. And this program you are participating in tonight is the result of impressive collaboration Many individuals, businesses, and organizations partnered with the Arts Council to make this year's Mayor's Arts Awards a fun and festive event. A great example is tonight's online art auction. Reminder, bidding ends at 8 p.m. I urge you to dig deep and contribute what you are able, because this auction provides an opportunity to sustain local artists who do so much to sustain us. Tonight, as we salute the arts champions in our community, Let's reflect on the importance of the arts in our lives and on the sustenance they provide us. Congratulations to all the award winners and nominees, and may everyone take away from this year's celebration profound inspiration, sustenance, and joy. Thank you so much, Mayor. Now, as we do at every year at the Mayor's Arts Awards, I want to take a few moments to remember our friends in the arts and humanities who have passed since we gathered at our event last year.
Though they are no longer with us, their work and their inspiration will continue to live on. If you have a moment and you haven't already done so, make sure to share this feed wherever you are, whether it's Facebook, uh, whether you're on YouTube, grab that YouTube link and share it. We want as many people to see this as possible. And again, engage in the comments. If you take a look in our comments right now, the entire community is speaking out, saying hello to each other, and just greeting. I mean, today is a celebration. If you got your drink, get your drink on. Either way, I hope you're wearing a big old smile today. I want to say hi, Brian. Hello, Ann. What's going on, Larry? Marilyn, I see you. Hello. Thanks for coming out to the Mayor's Arts Awards. We're going to have an absolutely phenomenal day. And while you're online, while we're all doing this digital thing, did I mention there's a live online art auction happening right now. Yeah, we asked 20 local artists to paint a 20 by 20 canvas based on tonight's theme of joy, which when you think about it in 2020 can mean a billion different things. Some people celebrate resiliency. Uh, others are looking forward to getting back to normal. And some of that joy is in experiencing something that may have been a little dark that you needed to go through. Either way, you ask 20 artists to create something about one theme, and you're going to get 20 different answers, which is the really cool thing about art, right? Now, if you'd like to bid on the artwork, the easiest way to do this is to hop on Google, type in Bidding Owl and Lincoln Arts Council, just right there, back to back, Bidding Owl. Lincoln Arts Council. That's going to take you straight to the auction. The auction is going to be live through the end of tonight's live stream. And if you're the winning bidder, the Lincoln Arts Council is going to contact you later this week for pickup or delivery because, you know, we're doing things right in the pandemic. Speaking of works of art, as you may know, the Arts Council commissions a piece of art to be awarded to the winners. For 2020, local glass artist Mark Cornblue has created a unique piece for each of tonight's winners. The glass pieces have the words joy our theme for the program etched into the glass in as many languages are spoken here in Lincoln, a reminder that arts can bring us joy and bring us together no matter what our differences are. Now, typically, at the Mayor's Arts Awards, the honorees come forward and do the, like, march up the stage, you shake the hand, you do the grip and grin and take the picture. Obviously, we're doing everything a little digital this year. This year, I actually had a chance to go deliver the awards in hand with Troy Gagner and Deb Weber of the Lincoln Arts Council, and it is crazy to meet people in their own setting. I mean, I think about fiendish plots here. When we met Charlie and Nancy, we sat down on the porch like it was a, a friend hangout. I mean, we literally just poop, sat down, and next thing you know, 30 minutes later, we had forgotten the whole reason that we came there. We were just experiencing community. So it was amazing to kind of take a glimpse into what other people's lives look like, and especially artists, because artists always do very interesting things when you get stuck in the house for a long period of time. Whew. Okay, now if you're getting tired of listening to me, you're in luck. It's time to meet this year's Mayor's Arts honorees. You'll be introduced to each honoree in a video created by LNK TV. But first, I want to say a big thank you to our video sponsors, Union Bank and Trust, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, Pinnacle Bank, and the Lethaby Financial Group, RBC Wealth Management. We're starting off our, with our hosts for this entire live stream, the ones we're giving a big thank you to. If you look behind me, oh my gosh, this beautiful, beautiful space. We're saying a big thank you to Fiendish Plots, who is the winner of the Outstanding Arts Organization Award. The Outstanding Arts Organization Award, sponsored by Davis Design, recognizes an arts group that has made significant contributions to Lincoln's arts community over a period of years. And for the past six years, Nancy Friedman Sanchez and Charlie Friedman have co-directed Fiendish Plots. Their programming focuses on contemporary visual artists who have a mature artistic language. Artists come from as far away as Egypt and Germany or from right down the street. Recently, Fiendish Plots was highlighted in USA Today as being one of the top DIY artist-run galleries in the country. Let's meet Nancy, Charlie, and fiendish plots. New York is a great place to see art you know, and to experience culture on all these different levels. But as artists, you really need to space to breathe. And Lincoln is a great space to breathe. It 
was a necessity to create something that was ours, a reinvention of ourselves as artists and makers, kind of on a whim. Said, well, what about if we create a, a space for, for exhibition? We are creatively plotting, fiendishly plotting, to, to bring different modes of expressions here to Lincoln and to the region that we want to see for our own selfish purposes. It, it hearkens the fact that we're a team, so we're kind of doing this together. You know, there's nothing solo about it. We're, uh, we're always in a conversation with each other. And when Plotting you have, together. And when you have two people together, you <laughs> plot. <laughs> Love the aspect of community, of bringing people together, of bringing art to Lincoln, of creating a contemporary space that invites uh, dialogue. Well, making art, I find that is humanist. It's creative. It's fiendish. It's uh, it's joyous. Well, the arts are the real melting pot and it brings all those different kinds of voices, uh, ethnicity, class, religion, gender, regions, all together, and they have something to say to each other. And there's, there's a lot of respect in that. Here I am, I'm with Nancy and Charlie from Fiendish Plots, and I mean, this space is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much for hosting the Mayor's Arts Awards in 2020. We're honored and totally delighted. <laughs> Tell me about the space. You. Tell me what you got going on here. Well, right now during the pandemic, this is our space full time because we can't uh, hold shows, but we will start again, hopefully in the spring of next year. Oh We're basically just working on our own artwork. What has the quarantine been like for you? I mean, you have your own space. Has it increased a little bit of the, the way your art is working? Uh, yes, like we are preparing a show together. We were offered a show in a very short notice and we decided to take the opportunity. Since we, since we had to cancel shows by a few artists, we decided to start working. Yes, why not create those yes. opportunities? Absolutely. Yeah. You've done so much in this space. Is there something that you want to do that you haven't been able to do yet? Um, everything that we haven't done yet, we want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the ultimate artist's answer. How am I supposed to like go past that? Because it's very true. You almost say, in this space of creativity, anything is possible. Any and everything. And in the year of 2020, we know 100% that if it is possible, you might as well do mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And for you both being here, allowing so many people to use this space as a community, we're absolutely thankful for you. Congratulations so much. Thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank okay. you. Nancy and Charlie, friends, I'm telling you, this space is amazing, and we couldn't have chosen we couldn't have chosen a better location, we couldn't have chosen a better team, and oh my gosh, and better people to host this entire event with. Plus, look at this. It's a real life working artist studio. Who writes this stuff? Not me. I'm telling you that. It's not me, but this is insanely cool, and we're incredibly thankful for it. Now, we're getting ready to switch gears and celebrate artistic achievement in our community. We have four different honorees for this achievement. Our first Artistic Achievement Award for Literary Arts is sponsored by Commercial Investment Properties and goes to Lucy Atkins and Becky Breed. The Artistic Achievement Award, Literary Arts, recognizes excellence and accomplishment in literary form. Together, Lucy and Becky co-authored Writing in Community, Say Goodbye to Writer's Block and Transform Your Life, which was awarded in IPI in the Independent Publishers Book Awards. Lucy and Becky present classes and workshops in Lincoln and the surrounding area, including Right from the Heart, Finding the Poet Within, Preserving the Story of Our Lives, and Jumpstart Your Writing. Let's meet Lucy and Becky.
Our journeys become collaborative because we hear other people talk about things that were important to them, that were significant, and, uh, and, and, and certainly other things about their lives, the, you know, the joys and, and the things that they have learned to overcome. We have each found this to be such a transformative portion of our lives. When we have creative differences, which we do from time to time, we are able to overcome them because of that commitment and the respect that we have for each other. People want to write. They want to celebrate parts of their, their story, part of their life experiences. And so we're never short of, of, of looking for classes. We are all creative in ways that we do not give ourselves credit for. And this book is a series of essays dealing with that and encouraging people to try out their creativity more often. There is nothing more wonderful when you are able to come up with the right image, when you put the words together just right. When we uh, write, it's, it's joyful because we celebrate what's significant. We look back over our lives in little bits and pieces and pull out what is worth talking about, and it affirms who we are. A big cheers goes out to Lucy and Becky. Oh my gosh, congratulations. And hey, don't forget, you can share this stream anywhere you are on social media. If you're seeing this on Facebook, make sure you share on Facebook. If you're on YouTube, share on YouTube. You know what I mean. Hop in the comments, connect with the community. Everybody's in there saying hi. I, I want to say hello to Chris. Marilyn, you are in there. Nancy, hello. Uh, Ed, hello. Good to see you there. And Tammy, hey, hey, hey. I see you with the wave there. Don't forget, you can share this at any time. Make sure you let people know what you're doing, who you're watching, and who you're there to support as well. It's important that we keep the arts at the forefront of the minds of the people in our community. Okay, our next artistic achievement honoree is Robert Esquivel. Robert has always had a love affair with color. Could be his Latino background, or maybe it was all those brightly colored crayons he ate when he was growing up. Whatever it was, his work in whatever medium is a celebration of color, as you can see by the piece he created for our live online art auction. See what I did there? Again, you're thinking about bidding a little bit? The Artistic Achievement Award for Visual Arts, sponsored by Joe and Judy Rufo, recognizes excellence and accomplishment in any of the visual arts, including film. Let's meet our honoree. Some people would look at my work and go, I'm so intimidated by all this color. But other people now look at it and go, oh, that's wonderful. I love this lushness of it. And that's, that's what I'm after. I wound up using what I knew how to do and how to teach and how to think outside the box for programming for people to, to help them become the most of who they are. Uh, I'm a big believer in creativity. I, I believe that, that everybody has it. You know, I always hate hearing people say to me, uh, I'm just not a creative person. I, I think creativity is there. People just need to sort of open themselves to it. Sometimes it'd be great to be able to make a buck by doing it, but if you can do it and not charge anybody anything to do it because you know it's gonna have a benefit, that really is the bigger, uh, broader goal because you're taking a gift that you got and, and, and being able to share it with, with other people. The 
Being able to create something and have somebody appreciate it and somebody to, to connect with it because I realized that wherever it was I am and wherever I am in my journey, wherever they are in theirs, for that moment, we've connected. And, uh, and I really value that. Big congratulations to Robert. Hey, this is a virtual celebration, so if you need to jump up and down, do some jumping jacks, hoot and holler, I get it. I can't hear you, but it's about the energy that goes up and us coming together as a community and absolutely loving on the arts. Feel free to celebrate tonight just as you would if we were in a giant auditorium inside of Pinnacle Bank Arena celebrating with all of our closest friends. Another big congratulations to Robert. Now it is time to meet our youngest Honoree, the Artistic Achievement Award for Youth, sponsored by Filament Essential Services, recognizes excellence and accomplishment in any arts discipline by a young person age 18 or younger. Natalie Leininger was a senior at Lincoln High School and she was honored with this award and is now studying at the University of Nebraska Lincoln. Her art is based on her stories, other stories, and our collective stories. Through her love of art and people, she has been able to collaborate with such inspiring companies as Bike LK and FES, who are bringing art to the community of Lincoln. Let's meet Natalie Leininger. was kind of that friend that moved with me throughout it all, um, even when I felt really alone. There's always a story behind it, and from that, the media is chosen based on the idea that's conveyed, and I would also say that it's very colorful. I love using color. My original idea was uh, using bikes instead of every time we fill up for gas, kind of that amount of pollution that goes out into our earth. Um, and so from that, that kind of inspired the whole station, which was really cool to see kind of my ideas come alive. So my career goals are mostly to be able to kind of work or just live in a place that fuels that creativity where I can share it with others um, and also be able to help people because I love communicating with people all around me. I think creativity is a big part of who I am and I don't see it leaving. <laughs> The joy of art comes from being able to really pour myself into it, the vulnerable, just every piece of it, and share it. Congratulations, Natalie. Wow, wow, amazing. And actually having the passion for the arts at such a young age. We're glad to see it, we're happy to see it. Congratulations and we hope you continue to make amazing art. Our final award for Artistic Achievement is for Performing Art. The Artistic Achievement Award Performing Arts is sponsored by k and Distributing and recognizes excellence and accomplishment in any of the performing arts, including film. This year's honoree, Kim Osborne Salestein, has combined a career of professional performance as assistant concertmaster of the Lincoln Symphony and a violinist in the <gasps> Omaha Symphony, Nebraska Chamber Players, Nebraska Chamber Orchestra, Nebraska Symphony Chamber Orchestra, Summit String Quartet, and the Abin Music Orchestra with 30 years of teaching excellence. I'm not done yet. As a recording artist, Kim appears on 11 albums for such diverse groups as Mannheim Steamroller and Saddle Creek Artists, The Faint, and Bright Eyes. <sighs> With that description, I get the feeling that Kim is always performing, and trust me, we're so thankful for that. Let's meet Kim Salestein.
first you have to have supportive parents when you start playing the instrument. And like I was from a musical family, am from a musical family, and my mom was very encouraging of that. And I, I had to practice before I could do anything else. And then I had great teachers. I have to say I, I, I enjoy performing live because that's what I've been trained to do, all the classical music and the symphonies and the uh, chamber music. So I enjoy that, plus there's an audience there and so there's that response back from the audience. I have to say that I obtained rock star status with my sons when the album that I recorded on For the Faint came out and his friends all purchased the item and they saw my name in there and so they said, Adam, are you related to Kim Salestine? She played on the faint. He says, that's my mom. The cool thing is when they are working on a technique or something like vibrato or staccato or spiccato or when they have a technical passage that's very difficult and all of a sudden, maybe after a month, it comes to them and it's like, aha, the light bulb goes off in their, in their heads and, they, and I like to share that joy with them. Aspects of the arts that bring me the most joy is its beauty, its ability to evoke emotion, and the wonder of its imagination and creativity. One great way to take down the barriers in our country is just to have beautiful music that everyone can enjoy, enjoy and appreciate. A big, big congratulations to Kim. And don't forget, you can get interactive on social media. Like I said, I, this is our first time doing the Mayor's Arts Awards virtually, and I've got all these screens. I'm like, what in the world? But on one of these is all of your comments from YouTube, from Facebook. So pop in your comments there. We're going to say hi. Uh, Kim, I, I know you're watching, and I want to just give this comment from Marilyn. It's actually a great compliment. She says, Kim, such a well-deserved recognition. You have made beautiful music for many many years and you have taught so many others to do the same and hey kim rex is also a fan he says unbelievably you play with everyone and such service to art kim you're really getting the shout outs here make sure to pop in on facebook you can pop in on youtube just leave a comment and let your arts community know that you're listening you can say hi to someone else that you know is watching whether it's someone that's two blocks away or someone that's 200 miles away, you can still say hello. And also don't forget about that online art bidding. We gave 20 artists a 20 by 20 canvas and said, hey, joy is the theme. We want you to go for it. And they're giving us tons of different variation on this. And you can still bid until the end of our live stream. Head to Google, type in Bidding Owl and Lincoln Arts Council, and that's gonna take you directly to our bidding page. And I mean, come on, let's face it. We could all use a little more arts engagement in our lives right now, so I'll tell you this. Every single cent that comes from our bidding is gonna go straight to the Lincoln Arts Council and our arts engagement programs. So hop on to Google, type in Bidding Owl and Lincoln Arts Council, hop in there, grab yourself a very unique piece of art. Okay, let's get back to our honorees, shall we? The Lincoln Arts Council, in cooperation with the Kimmel Foundation and the Kimmel Harding Nelson Center for the Arts, is happy to again offer two special Mayor's Arts Awards to emerging artists and writers working here in Lincoln. Begun in 2009, the Kimmel Emerging Artist Award includes a two-week residency at the Kimmel Harding Nelson Center for the Arts and a $1,000 stipend. The awards go to one emerging visual artist and one emerging writer. Only artists working in Lincoln, Nebraska through the year end of 2019 were considered for this year's award. Award winners are chosen by the Kimmel Harding Nelson Center staff and current artists in residence. Our first emerging artist honoree is Amy Keller. Amy is the creator and co-editor of the Lincoln Underground Literary Magazine. She has also written three unpublished novels and had her poetry and prose published in Illuminations, the literary journal of Southeast Community College, as well as the Lincoln Underground. She's also a singer-songwriter, having written over 100 songs and performed at a variety of venues around Lincoln. Amy told us she'd be live tweeting on Twitter during this live stream, so if you want to check out what Amy has to say, you can right now. It's at Amy Keller Music. Now, 
Let's meet Amy. One of the things that people said to me a lot was that they really liked the tone of the magazine and our website that we had and they felt that it was welcoming and not, not elitist and it made them want to be a part of it. I write a lot of things about my own personal experiences and then kind of draw conclusions from those um, about other things in our society, things in life, how, how does the world work, you know, that sort of a thing. So a lot of introspection. For a long time I've been working on um, songs I've, write, I've been writing or um, essays, but I've kind of kept a lot of it to myself at least for the past few years. So I'm working on putting them all together and sharing them more. Every time I make something, I feel like I turn something painful, difficult, confusing in my life into something beautiful. And I think that's what art does, like any kind of art. It's amazing to turn something terrible into something wonderful. I think it's, it's kind of like magic. And though we are broken, yet we will mend and will endure till the end. A big congratulations to Amy. I'm looking at the comments here again. Uh, uh, Robert, it looks like Amy is also a fan of you, and Robert, I'm sure you're a fan of Amy. It's a giant arts community here. Big congratulations to Amy Keller once again. Now, let's meet our honoree for the Emerging Artist Visual Award. Sophia Rupert earned a BFA in Sculpture and a BA in Art History from Southern Illinois University Edwardsville before completing her MFA in Sculpture at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Her work has been exhibited nationally in galleries and museums, including the Alexandria Museum of Art in Alexandria, Louisiana, the Lee Dam Art Center in Maryville, Kansas, the Virago in Contemporary Art and Adornment in Seattle, Washington, Art St. Louis in St. Louis, Missouri, and the Rockford Art Museum in Rockford, Illinois. Whoa, not too bad for an emerging artist. Come on, Sophia. <laughs> Let's meet our emerging artist. My work is introspective, contemplative, and it looks at the residuals of human life. It thinks about psychology, human experience, and utilizes visual touchstones from my childhood growing up in central Illinois to weave together a, a poetic history and trying to find beauty in spite of trauma. I do a lot of storytelling and um, working through complicated situations, personal relationships, uh, narratives told by grandparents, um, or, or something as simple as, as fishing and, and getting a line caught in the reeds. With these strong personal connections, it's really helped me be more introspective and think about family history and my connection to the land, my connection to the objects around me, and really my, my connection to my family and my ancestry. I can't think of anything more important than time, space, and community support. The support from the community is just a validation that, that uh, is invaluable. The freedom to celebrate curiosity, to search for meaning in, a, in life, and to impact others on a fundamentally human level.
Congratulations, Sophia. I don't want you to forget, you can share this stream on your social media page. You can share it on Facebook, you can share it on YouTube. All you gotta do is click that share button. Make sure to give it a like, make sure to pop in a comment. Let your arts community know that you're here, you're engaged, and you're here ready to celebrate. I don't know if you were able to get some of those drinks from the other room, but my goodness, they look delicious. I can't drink mine yet because mine is the one that you set on fire. So I'm gonna hold off on that just for a second. But trust me, as soon as I sit down at home, I'm gonna make sure that I get my drink in from the other room. Share our social media page, grab your drink, sit back. We're still deep off in our party. Now that you all know what you see on stage or on screen, I want you to know that's just the tip of the iceberg. Backstage and behind the camera is where so much work gets done. Like for live streams, for instance, without the help of Firespring, who created our live stream landing page and so many of the graphics that you see tonight, Diane Gonzalez, Andrew Fuller at LNK TV, who put together all of these wonderful videos highlighting our winners, and of course, saying hello to our friends, the Basement Creators Network, who are in charge of everything live stream, there would be no Mayor's Arts Awards this year. I really do wanna say a big thank you to everyone involved in the arts in Lincoln. Okay, so now let's celebrate the hard work backstage, shall we? The Art Scene Backstage Award, sponsored by Susan Centered Stewart, recognizes extraordinary service to the arts through behind the scenes efforts. This year's honoree, Catherine Cover, has been designing and directing Lincoln since 1986. Cat has designed costumes in Lincoln for Flatwater Shakespeare Festival, UNL Theater, UNL Opera, Lincoln Community Playhouse, and others. Cat says, costume design is a very particular art. You have so many variables in the process, time, period, style, director's concept, budget, and most importantly, the human form. I love collaborative aspect of all theater projects. Every theater in Lincoln I work with has become a second family. Aw, let's meet Kat. I love the hands-on, I am a the designer who came at it from the construction end of it. I love the challenge of making armor out of felt. I love the challenge of the crafting and, and hard to do things. The most important thing is that the costumes add to that story, that, that continues the steps to make it a successful telling of that story. It was 162 costumes, and it was a cast of over 100, and I had an entire staff of people who didn't know how to sew. But we did it, we got it, and it ended up absolutely stunning. So spectacular. People use that term all the time, their theater family, but I've worked in most of the theaters in the city, and I still feel going home when I walk in. I hadn't been in the Playhouse in a year, I walked in to work on a show and it still felt like I was going home. Congratulations, Kat. The benefactor of the Arts Awards, sponsored by BVH Architects, honors an individual, family, organization, or business making significant financial contributions to the arts. This year's honorees are probably not strangers to Lincoln Arts community. Together, Sally and Jack Campbell have more achievements than could ever be listed in a single paragraph, to be honest. From Sally's co-founding of the Friends of Lead to Jack's presidency of the Nebraska Art Association, they've been lifelong contributors to the arts in Nebraska. Sally and Jack feel an obligation to support for others that which has brought so much enjoyment 
and quality to their lives. If we can't do it ourselves, we should support it, is their mantra. Let's meet Sally and Jack. Sixty-nine years of marriage now, that that's one thing that we've on the same page. We've enjoyed the arts, both visual and performing arts. They've been a part of our life, and uh, we feel that uh, you should give back, so we uh, feel we should be supporting. Since this is an ode to joy, I would say it's a lot of joy that it has brought. And we do like the same things. We like to look at the same things. We like museums. So that is a great part of our life, really. Well, it certainly is a fundamental part of a, of a, of a city, I think, to, to its culture. And uh, it, uh, it, it broadens the whole uh, aspect of living in, in a city. One of the blessings in our life has been all the wonderful people that it's brought into our lives and that throughout the state. So that's been a, a great joy. It is not a bowl of cherries. It's a bowl of raisins. Raisin kids, and raisin hell, and raisin money. <laughs> and you think about that, there's a little joy in all, every aspect of that, I think. And uh, that's what we give back, a little joy. I just want to say a big congratulations to Sally and Jack for working so hard to advocate for the arts in our community. And honestly, I don't know if Sally and Jack are on the stream, if you could catch the stream, but so many people are showing their love and thanks for what you've done in the community. So again, not only from us at the Lincoln Arts Council, but from everyone in the arts community pouring in their love in the comment section right now, I want to say thank you so much, Jack and Sally, for everything that you have done. Advocating for the arts is a large part of the Lincoln Arts Council's mission. And no part of that is more important than creating a love and appreciation for arts and music and young people. That's what LAC's Upstart School Residencies have been doing for a decade in Title I schools all across Lincoln and also more increasingly in partnership with community development organizations like South of Downtown. Here's a look at one of those residencies that took place at Campbell Elementary and was honestly really the first time that our Beethoven's 250th birthday Ode to Joy theme really came through. At Campbell Elementary this semester, we have been doing a very exciting project, which is part of our Upstart programming. We have an artist, Tom Myers, who is there doing a mural that will commemorate their anniversary. The residency that we did at Campbell Elementary is just one example of the great work that we've been privileged to do this year. We are all about providing access to the arts for the entire community and this is a great example of how we make that happen. The partnership between um, Lincoln Public Schools and the Lincoln Arts Council has been going on for a number of years. Um, previous to my um, employment as the curriculum specialist and so for the past seven years I've had a great opportunity to work with everyone from the Lincoln Arts Council. So here's what I'm doing. What I'm doing is uh, trying to assemble and synthesize what a bunch of kids have helped me uh, plan and turn their thoughts into a mural. The theme for the mural is joy. 
Campbell School is such an interesting place to be. It is the home of 635 students and we have 28 different languages. So we have families from all over the world that land at Campbell. So when we, when we started writing the school song, we studied a couple of other adaptations of Beethoven's Ode to Joy. Uh, most of our kids have heard of Beethoven uh, and they have a connotation of classical music as being something, a snore fest. I will say when the string quartet came and played Beethoven's works, you could have heard a pin drop. They were so engaged, they were so excited. Um, they were listening to every nuance and they really, really enjoyed that performance. And once we had that performance, that really got them excited about writing their own version for our school. He really listened to our students and what um, joy meant to them. And then he was very um, intentional with incorporating special parts of their lives into this mural. I told a staff member today, I said, I think we need to find another wall we can have him paint because I don't want him to go. <laughs> He's really been a real, an asset to our building and we really appreciate it. I'm telling you, so much great work is being done in our schools and other settings through the Upstart program. And I've actually been lucky enough to be involved in working with people through the program. Before I joined the board, I was actually just a teaching artist with the Lincoln Arts Council. And I really can't tell you, by the way, what I taught was beatboxing. If you don't know what beatboxing is, here's a small snippet. So, beatboxing, teaching artist, that's how I kind of got locked into the, to the community of really helping advocate for the arts. And I can't tell you the look on the children's faces when they see that an art that they want to create doesn't cost money, it can be done on their own time. No one can tell them that they're not able to do it. They can go at their own pace. And every art has that element of it that can be shared with students of any age, to be honest with you. So for me, the Upstart program is something that has changed my life. And I really do hope that it's changed the lives of the students that I've been able to teach as well. OK, let's get back to our honorees. This is so, so much fun. I hope you're sharing this on social media. I hope you're commenting and engaging with the community. And I really hope that you got yourself a little bit of food and a little bit of drink so that we all can celebrate together. OK, the Outstanding Events Award. It is time. It's sponsored by Mark and Kathy LeBaron. And it recognizes a performance exhibition or project that'll be notable in the community memory for years to come because of its content or cultural significance. Tonight's honoree is Vision Maker Media's Vision Maker Film Festival. As Vision Maker Media approaches their 44th year delivering the highest quality Native American films to public television and online mediums, they also near their eighth year hosting the Biennial Vision Maker Film Festival, which will only be held online this year. Every other year, though, the festival showcases the best American Indian, Alaska Native, and worldwide indigenous films. Accompanying the films, the festival gathers a collective of our most inspiring filmmakers and Native celebrities to engage the community in important and captivating public conversations, creating a space for both healing and learning. They empower and engage Native people to share stories and envision a world changed and healed by understanding Native stories and the public conversations that they can generate. Let's learn more about the Vision Maker Film Festival. all about empowering natives to share their stories. 
Typically we'll have a filmmaker come in from the, one of the films to talk about their experience in producing that film. And we try to really highlight and give opportunities to Native American filmmakers in particular. To have filmmakers come in and to give them resources and to connect them with our community members and further education um, in Native communities and non-Native communities is really powerful. It's important to create an understanding of the Native American culture or indigenous culture so we can stop racist things from happening so that we can educate the public about how Natives are in this world today and um, get away from the stereotypes. For too long we've been silenced and so this is a chance to give Natives a voice in our own community. A lot of times the audience members walk away with something that they want to do to help Native people or to help people in their own communities. We really try to get empowering films that sort of trigger the social justice warrior within each person. A big congratulations to Vision Maker Media. Next up is our Arts for Kids Awards. Sponsored by the Lincoln Community Foundation, the Arts for Kids Award honors an individual or organization from outside the arts professions whose leadership has enhanced art activities and experiences for children. But before we head into there, I wanna to talk to Alana Stone from Vision Maker Media because, wow, a big congratulations. Alana, can you hear me okay? Are we, are we on? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you oh hear me? Oh my gosh, Alana. How are you? How are you feeling about winning this award? I'm great. I It's amazing that we won this award. Like, amazing. <laughs> how is being in quarantine and having to deal with moving everything online this year, how has that been for you all? Um, honestly, it was an amazing opportunity to take our film festival online. Because here we'd only had in-person film festivals, but with this that we're able to reach people from around the world to tune in and see worldwide indigenous films. Yes. Is there anything that you learned from the experience that you're like, yo, we're taking this from now till forever? Uh, yeah. So the feedback we received has been very eye opening and that we now have plans to program many festivals for free on our website. That is sweet. Congratulations. How awesome. Now, why Thank is it you. so important, you know, for, for people that have, this is their first time interacting with you, I want you to say why it's so important that the Vision Maker Film Festival showcases the best of American Indian, Alaska Native, and worldwide indigenous films. So the Native representation in, in the media allows Native youth to grow up with stories that represent backgrounds, with figures that embody their culture. And these stories can generate conversations about present day Native issues and also empower Indigenous communities to get out there and tell their stories. Oh my gosh, wow. It's the voice that we need and you all absolutely provide a platform and push it out there. Thank you so much for joining me and a big congratulations to Vision Maker Media. Here's the virtual round of applause. <laughs> cheers, cheers, cheers. Thanks so much for joining me, Alana. Now, next up, like I said, is our Arts for Kids Awards. This award honors an individual or organization from outside the arts professions whose leadership has enhanced arts activities and experiences for children. This year's honoree, is the Girl Scouts Art Venture Program. Art Venture is a unique celebration of creative expression that matches small groups of Girl Scouts with professional artists for a collaborative arts education experience. Girls observe careers in the arts industry while also participating in philanthropy. Working as a team from conception to completion, artists and girls create original artwork that is sold at the Art Venture silent auction. Let's learn a little more about Art Venture. The purpose of Art Venture is for 
girls to explore the arts, no matter what their skill level is. And with Girl Scouting, we want girls to take risks and try new things, and Art Venture is a great way to do that. Girl Scouts really is all about letting girls have the opportunity to explore their interests. And arts is always an interest of girls. So whether it's welding or molding clay, we're making sure that that opportunity is happening. So they're putting their heart and their soul into these, these pieces and then they're watching them au be auctioned off to support other programs for girls. The artists are um, sharing their passion and love of art with the girls and they're helping them build confidence and, and gain new skills, so it's pretty cool. The girls getting to see their artwork displayed with other artists is pretty fantastic, just knowing that they had that experience that they'll likely remember for many years to come. But also I'd say seeing the girls come back year over year and watching them grow. They come to the auction and they see their artwork. They get super excited to find their artists, to show their families, like, this is what we made. And they're connecting with the other girls that they worked on the collaborative art with. So I think that's probably my favorite part, is just watching them at the finale. Congratulations to the Girl Scouts Art Venture Program. The Legacy of the Arts Award, sponsored by Legacy Retirement Communities, recognizes a senior, or should I say, a citizen aged 55 years or older, actively involved in creating, teaching, sharing, or inspiring artistic expression in any discipline. Our honoree in 2020 is Joe Rufo, an independent Lincoln artist. He was a Fulbright Scholar to Brazil in 1963 and has taught and been an arts administrator at several colleges and universities, including UNL, where he was chairman of the UNL Department of Art and Art History for 19 years. Joe has served as president of the Lincoln Arts Council, is a member of the Public Arts Lincoln Board, and is a member of the Board of Advisors for the Kimmel Harding Nelson Center for the Arts. He has served on the Board of Directors of the National Association of Schools in Art and design, <laughs> let's meet Joe. They're important because they bring life to the community. Even the people who are not directly involved are touched. They may not know it, but they are. So I used to tell my students, you cannot be an artist if you cannot take rejection. Not everybody's gonna like what you do, and if they don't like it, you can't be upset about it. You just have to move on, because there will be someone who will like it. The Arts Council um, reaches out to the community with different uh, projects that uh, help artists connect with the public. A lot of really good work with uh, children in especially elementary schools and middle school. It simply is that when you're working at a, a work of art, at some point, you get very much involved in it, and you do shut out everything else around you to concentrate on those images and that development. And that has a certain feeling in your being. Congratulations, Joe. And I gotta say, 
If you're on social channels and you're watching, look in the comments. People are really sharing a lot of love. And Joe, wow, you, you do have a lot of love for you here. Larry says, congratulations, Joe. Very happy for you. Uh, Sally says, Joe is a great artist and friend, and I'm so glad that this is virtual so I can see him receive the award. Joe, there's a lot of love for you in this community. Thank you so much for everything you've done, and congratulations. Now, let's meet the Heart of the Arts Award nominee, Derek, excuse me, Eric Stearns. The Heart of the Arts Awards recognizes an individual or organization for outstanding volunteer dedication to the arts or for making a major overall impact on the arts in Lincoln. Eric is an associate professor of art and design at Doan University, where he has taught in the College of Arts and Sciences for the past 10 years. Outside of the classroom, Eric spends his time in the studio creating sculptural pierced raku ceramic art focusing on philanthropic projects that blend his love of ceramics and community service. In 2014, Eric started Community Cups for Kids, a service learning project that challenged his students to create and design 50 cups to raise funds for Voices for Children in Nebraska. Eric has brought his project to Saratoga and Holmes Elementary Schools as part of the Lincoln Arts Council's Upstart program. Let's meet Eric. I did learn early on that they do break pretty frequently. Um, so, but that's 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 kind of I love that aspect of it. They're so precious that um, and they're not going to last forever. Just like me, I'm not going to last forever, but I enjoy making them. Know that to succeed in ceramics, you are going to have failure. Things aren't going to happen the way that you want them to. Um, and with ceramics, everything's changing every day. Chemicals, material, nothing will always be the same every time you fire it. So it pushes the students to become a better artist um, and think outside the box. fell in love with her ultimate goal and her idea as far as bringing more arts into Lincoln and how can we expand it. So that's just kind of the first step and it's, it's grown ever more. A lot of individuals are very hesitant about going to an art gallery. Maybe it's too expensive, maybe it's just not their style, but if you can create, have, do an activity where it's more personable, it's more meaningful to them, it's just a hands-on approach that gets them excited about, wow, I didn't think I could do this. It's not about how much you sell, it's not about how much you make, but if you can give back to that one person, one individual, one family, and see the expression on their face, that is the best thing that's ever, that I ever experienced. That pushes me to do more. Congratulations to Eric. Oh my gosh, don't forget to share this stream on any of your social channels while you're watching. Let people know what you're watching, who won what award, who you're proud of. Just share the stream, uh, say a thank you or say a congratulations and tag that person. It means a lot to the entire community and of course to the Lincoln Arts Council as well. Now, the Gladys Lux Education Award recognizes special initiatives or dedication to arts education. That dedication is exemplified by this year's honoree, Robert Henricks, or as I say, Bob. You might have heard him as Mr. Bob as well. Bob is the theater director at Lincoln Southwest High School. He's taught for 28 years and directed over 100 productions. As the founding director at Southwest, he is continually working to maintain a nationally recognized theater program. He was named Nebraska Theater Teacher of the Year three times was the first recipient of the National Outstanding Theater Educator Award, received the EDTA's President's Award, and was inducted into the EDTA Hall of Fame. LSW was the first Nebraska school to receive an EDTA Outstanding School Award and the only one to win it twice. Let's meet Bob. <laughs> I 
think I'm most proud of is the fact that we've found, you know, our program tries to find home for kids as the arts do, um, especially for those kids that are the most at risk the arts are the most beneficial for. So to find, uh, it's not really for me about the productions, I kind of take the Tom Osborne philosophy of it's about the process. The important part is that interaction between reaching out into the dark and connecting with the audience so that they get the story that we're telling. And we say all the time, if it happens to you on stage, it will happen to the audience as well. So it's getting that impactful reaction from the audience that's the most important, I think. Being a good citizen means being able to help and support the community that you, that's helping and support you. Just as the community of Lincoln supported the building of Southwest and the new bond issues, it's important to turn around and make sure that you give back to that community that supported you. To have the courage to open yourself up, your heart and your feelings and give, and give and give, uh, and, uh, and sometimes you get that back and sometimes you don't, but um, the main aspect is that that's why all teachers, I think, that are good teachers got into teaching, was they had something to give uh, to those students. The aspect of the arts that brings me the most joy is seeing um, the reaction that the arts have on those students' lives. No matter what they want to go into, as we know, the arts are beneficial for all people, um, both for their empathy and for their intelligence. Big congratulations to Bob. Funny enough, I was actually a student. I, my first experience on a stage, like on an actual legit theater stage, was with Bob. So, Bob, can you hear me? Are we on together? Oh, Bob, I think you're muted there. Oh, we're going to work through this. Trust me. If you haven't already, share the stream. And, Bob, go ahead and keep talking until, <laughs> until it comes through. But go ahead and share the stream while we wait. Share the stream. Make sure to pop into the comment section there because we have an entire arts community that's coming together to celebrate, uh, to say thank you for all of our award winners who are hopping in, uh, joining, and, of course, who are winning these awards. Oh. We're only here to celebrate. Oh. It's a I'm party. If you haven't tried to drink from the other room, if you haven't even thought about the other room, they have made us two signature drinks you can still get those drinks even if you didn't get them tonight all you have to can do is go me? to the other room's facebook page and they'll hook it up so that you can go pick it up later on bob I, are we on are we on can you hear me now hey i can hear hey. you how are how you are it's good great to see you, you. Good to see you. You're doing, you're doing a great job of making Southwest Theater and LSW proud as always, man. <laughs> Thank you. I seriously appreciate that. And, you know, I think back to the time I stepped on the stage and all of those lessons that you taught from sitting in the seat with the notebook and I'm standing on stage getting those <laughs> notes. You get a lot of students that are coming through and they build their, their kind of understanding of the world uh, based on how they experience the arts. But how has that changed for you in 2020, Bob? Well, uh, it's been, you know, turned, everything's been turned upside down. So everything we've been trying to do our production of Newsies since last spring when we got shut down about three weeks before our production when we were in dress rehearsals. Um, those seniors graduated and then weren't able to come back because of COVID in the fall. Wow. So we were going to do it in September, but then with restrictions, uh, then we moved it to December. We did a, a different socially distant uh, Silver Rock Theater Cabaret in the fall at the end of September. And now we're still working on uh, Newsies with new cast members as well as some of the returning ones to hopefully be able to do it in uh, December. But the audiences are all restricted to just four family members of each cast or crew member. Uh, so we're also live streaming all of those events as well uh, to try and, uh, you know, we, we have to keep staying in the black the whole time. So um, we're trying to find new ways all the time to keep the kids healthy during rehearsal, uh, as well as during the school time, and then keep the shows at as highest quality that we want them to be at. That sounds like 8,000 things happening all at once. And then on top of that, being, you know, being a straight up educator as well, uh, that's a ton. What's the one thing, you know, you've got all this stuff flying around. What's something that helps you just incinerate yourself? What does Bob do to, to, to let it flow? 
Well, gosh, it used to be Husker football, but, you know, it hasn't <laughs> happened either. So uh, hopefully we'll get to see a little uh, in the next couple of weeks. But um, also, you know, I used to try and work out a lot before COVID as well, but, uh, you know, it'll release some stress that way, but I haven't really done that. So I've really been kind of, you know, at a loss of things, but it's just having uh, great friends to talk to, being socially distant with, family members, all of that good stuff to help you relax and stay focused. And obviously having this great arts community here doesn't hurt one bit. Absolutely. Everybody's in the same boat together. Yes. Bob, thank you so much and congratulations once again. You bet. Thanks, Dwayne. Great to see you. Good to see you too. All right. We're partying here, friends. Remember, share this stream, right? There are people that need to be exposed to the arts and this is a really easy, quick way to do it, right? You don't have to ask for anything. You just share hey, here's something cool that I'm doing tonight. I think it's awesome. You'll probably love it too. And that way the arts community is going to come together and grow even stronger. Now we're nearing the end. There's just a few more honorees that I would love to introduce you to. Next up, we have the Clark Anderson Urban Design Awards sponsored by Clark Anderson Partners. Urban Design Awards are chosen annually by the city's Urban Design Committee. The Urban Design Committee provides advisory services to the city on the design of a number of different project types. But Rather than listen to me, list them out. Let's hear from Mark Hanley, a Lincoln Council board member who also serves on the Urban Design Committee. Hello, my name is Mark Canny. In addition to serving on the Lincoln Arts Council Board of Directors, I'm also a member of the City of Lincoln's Urban Design Committee, along with Emily Deeker, Tammy Eaglebull, Peter Hind, Tom Houston, Gil Peace, and Michelle Penn. The Urban Design Committee provides advisory services to the city on the design of city-owned buildings and other public projects, major public-private developments, and any private projects constructed on the city right-of-way or other city property. The committee's intent is to make sure that the new public facilities are exemplary, that they provide functional and aesthetically pleasing facilities for the public and model good design for the private sector. The Larry Anderson Urban Design Award was instituted in 1984 by the Urban Design Committee, named in memory of the committee's inaugural chairman, a prominent Lincoln landscape architect and urban planner. The awards are intended to promote public education and appreciation of urban design by recognizing outstanding public and private projects. This year, the committee has recognized two projects one public and one private for their exemplary design. The N Street Bikeway, along with the bike share stations, was recommended for the Public Project Award. The protected bikeway extends from the historic Haymarket to Antelope Creek. Open in 2014, the bikeway sees about 100,000 riders per year. Bike Link, which has 19 bike stations and more than 100 bikes, has surpassed 70,000 rides since its inception in April of 2018. Block 52, the Lumberworks block, was recommended for the Private Project Award. The block includes the new Canopy Row building, which houses office space, residential units, and a Canopy Street Market grocery store. It also includes the Schwartz building, which has been renovated for commercial and residential uses. As a part of the streetscape, this project added sections of historic Canopy south of O Street, extending the Canopy into South Haymarket. Art panels were added to the public stairwell facade on Canopy Street and to mask an LES substation Art panels were also incorporated in a screen wall along N Street, and an entry feature of the corner of 8th and N, and in canopy structure along 8th Street. Congratulations to everyone involved in the N Street Bikeway slash Bike LNK and Block 52, uh, the Lumberworks Block. How fortunate it is that we have such an amazing public improvement project community like this in our community. Okay, now I would like to introduce someone very special to me, the Executive Director of the Lincoln Arts Council, Deb Weber is joining us. Deb, can you hear me okay? I'll try this again. Deb, can you hear me? Hey, this, this is the fun thing about doing virtual events, right? It's the Mayor's Arts Awards, our 42nd year, and we have never, 
ever done it virtually. So for the first time, we have experts, Basement Creators Network, always working around the clock. Want to give them a big thank you. Also, a big thank you to, Spire, to Firespring as well uh, for a lot of the graphics that you're seeing on your screen. While you have a moment, I'm just going to say it again. We have the online auction going. All you have to do, go to Google. That one thing that no one's ever heard of, right? Google, type in bidding owl, B-I-D-D-I-N-G-O-W-L, and then type in Lincoln Arts Council. That's going to take you directly to the page where you can bid on an amazing assortment, absolutely phenomenal assortment of 20, 20 different pieces created by 20 different artists. We handed them a canvas, a 20 by 20 canvas, and said, hey, our theme for this afternoon or for this evening slash night-ish is joy. How in the world can you show us a little bit of joy? And, and I said this earlier, but I really do want to re-emphasize that in 2020, with the pandemic happening and everything going on, joy means so many different things to so many different people. To be absolutely honest with you, for me, the joy was in the slowdown and the, and the focus that was needed to re-engage with the communities that I love. There's so many people that you felt like you couldn't talk to for a while. Uh, there's so many people that you were like, man, I want to reconnect with them. But it was great for me, personally, to have a small break and then hop back in and re-engage. So for everyone, joy is going to be something completely different. And that is what these artists showed off in their 20 by 20 pieces that they showed for the awards. Make sure to get in the bidding. Deb, can you hear me? We got a couple of technical issues. Technical difficulties. We will try to continue to talk to Deb. But look, we've made it to our final award for the evening. And I seriously, from my heart, from the Lincoln Arts Council, from the board, and from Basement Creators Network, everybody that's been a part of this, I seriously hope that you've enjoyed yourself as much as we have. If you're like, eh, I mean, I'm almost there, here's my recommendation. Grab another glass, sit back, because man, we're having ourselves a good time. Our final award. This is the final award. This is why I say grab yourself another glass and prepare yourself. It's the Mayor's Choice Award, sponsored by Doug and Mary Campbell. This year, Mayor Lyrian Gaylor Baird is honoring Kathleen Grossman and Down Under Pottery for their work with the Lincoln Food Bank to help alleviate hunger in Lincoln through the Empty Bowls event. Down Under Pottery opened in 1996 as a community pottering studio, teaching wheel throwing techniques to adults of all ages. Teaching pottery and supporting local charities and causes has always been the focus of Down Under Pottery. Over the years, Down Under Pottery has taught several hundred students and supported dozens of local and regional fundraisers. They're especially proud to be involved with Empty Bowls. Let's learn a little bit more about Down Under Pottery and the Empty Bowls Project. It fulfills me and to be able to do something that I love to do that I can use to, to feed the community is amazing. I couldn't give monetarily the value of what those bowls are as a donation, but I can donate those bowls to create that kind of value to feed our community. When you see somebody creating and it becomes their own, their own signature starts appearing on what they're making. Um, that is incredibly gratifying because it's another form of creating. I would love the day that they don't need me anymore. Um, I would look forward to that day. But the joy it gives me knowing that I can have an impact right here in Lancaster County, uh, right here in Lincoln, Nebraska, um, uh, is really very fulfilling. It gives me, it gives me reason to continue.
All right, now I would like to introduce someone that is so important and special to all of us in the community of arts here in Lincoln and the greater Nebraska area. Deb Weber is our executive director of the Lincoln Arts Council. Deb, can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Oh, awesome. Can you hear me? I can most definitely hear you now. Deb, how are you feeling about tonight? It's the okay. Mayor's Arts Awards, we're here. Oh, it's been such a different day. It's um, We've had so many unknowns. It's been wonderful. And I'm here on my driveway with a fire with uh, Board President Tony Ryling. We're just enjoying the evening and also with Jackie Tillman. Oh, hey, hey. And Deb, you wanted to share a few words to, to everyone watching, you know, and people, you know, just telling them about the importance of the Lincoln Arts Council and our, and our uh, programming that we're going to be doing this year. Well, first of all, I just have to say congratulations to the award winners. It's uh, quite a testament to the arts community that we've been an important part of recovery from COVID. So thank you um, from the board of directors and myself. Um, the Arts Council, we're so involved with trying to make arts access a possibility for all in our community. And, and moving forward in this next year, we're going to create a lot of joy through the arts. That's the way to do it. And I guess we can kind of start a lot of that momentum right here at the Mayor's Arts Award. So if people want to get involved moving forward, if our community wants to come together and hop in and they haven't already done so, where can people go to get involved with the Lincoln Arts Council? Well, the best thing to do is to just email us. We're not in the office, of course. So email us and we will definitely get you connected with our programming. We're hoping that next year we can do uh, programming as we can get back into the schools, but we know we'll be doing a Might have had a small freeze here. We did. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> we, had, we had just the, the slightest freeze, Deb. But before, before we go, can you give us, I mean, you're outside with the fire, you know, you got the friends yeah. around you. I'm assuming you got a little bit of hot chocolate somewhere there. The Ode to Joy is real where you are. Can you give us one uh, send-off Ode to Joy feeling from Deb Weber? The arts create such incredible joy. And, um, you know, throughout history, artists have turned to the art them really get through difficult times. And... Uh, we look at the video from Campbell that we saw tonight, and how can we not feel joy? So thank you, Dwayne. Thank you to Diane as well, and to Andrew for all of your work, and also uh, to Basement Creators Network and Fire Spring. You guys have done an awesome so job. True. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. That's Deb Weber, executive director of the Lincoln Arts Council. Uh, like Deb said, I want to give the big round of applause. This is my virtual round of applause to everyone that has created this amazing show because, oh, my gosh, a lot of work has gone into it. And what you see is literally only the tip of the iceberg. I want to let you know, before we stop this thing, the live online art auction is going to be closing soon. You got to be sure to get your final bids in now. You know what you got to get that piece. You've been eyeing it all night. You've been like, ah, I've been thinking about it. Here's what you need to do. Google Bidding Owl and Lincoln Arts Council. It'll take you straight to the page that you need to get bidding. And then you're going to be hopping in, grabbing your favorite piece, putting it wherever you need to. But here's the best part. All proceeds from this auction go to the Lincoln Arts Council and the Arts Engagement Programming, which is absolutely vital for continuing to grow the arts in our community. Well, folks, this has been a wonderful virtual time. We're out at Fiendish Plots, and look, you got to come out here and see this space because it is absolutely phenomenal. I want to say thank you for joining us to celebrate the arts in our community. I want to say a big thank you and congratulations to all of our honorees for the hard work and sacrifice that they have made to make our community beautiful, connected, and, of course, a wonderfully caring place. I do have to stop and say a thank you to our mayor, Mayor Lirian Gaylor-Baird, 
Fiendish Plots, Basement Creators Network, LNK TV, and Firespring for all the help with tonight's event. Thank you to the Nebraska Arts Council, the Nebraska Cultural Endowment for their ongoing support of the Lincoln Arts Council and the arts community right here in Lincoln. A big thank you to the Lincoln Arts Council Board of Directors and Ghost Light Society members for their continued support of the work we do. And finally, thank you for joining us. Without you, there literally is no Mayor's Arts Awards. It just can't happen. And we wouldn't have an amazing community like we do right here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Looks like I'll see you next year at the Mayor's Arts Awards. Good night, everyone. Not quite. We've got one more thing we need to do. What? We've had some comments online that said you deserve an award for being the, S the best <laughs> MC <laughs> in the city, in the States. And Charlie, next door, as he was watching this, actually made you what? this special award <laughs> as the best MC award. <laughs> well, thank you. So we want to thank Dwayne for all of his hard work, and we want to thank Charlie Friedman, of course, for yeah. the hours of work he put into this at the studio <laughs> next door. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. I'll t I'm, I'm taking this one home. This one's going home with me. You have a good night. <laughs> Bye.